Hello farmers and welcome back to another test in Farmer's Dynasty. No, it's not a day on the farm today. We're going to get to testing. A test that some people have been asking for me to do and I'm pretty sure a lot of people out there would like to know. We are down in my favorite field to test. We are uh, just on the other side of John's store. So here's John's store circling right here. Got all my equipment. Well, not all my equipment. The equipment we need for today's test. All down in this field and the reason why I like this field is pretty close to being one hectare in size here uh, 0.96 hectares to be exact uh, if you look at the numbers I, I saved the game before I hired this worker uh, I saved the game just before I hired the worker so that'll be my restart point but as you can see the field has not been plowed cultivated fertilized or manured the test we are doing today is yield no 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 not that kind of a yield a yield on the field yeah the, we're gonna see how each crop yields on the same field and uh, today's date is the 28th of April so every time we finish harvesting a crop I'll reload the game it'll be this exact date exact time that we're starting to reseed the field I don't want someone coming back and saying well you planted this crop and then uh, you planted this crop in the spring and the next crop in summer so the yield is gonna be lower it should be as close as we can get it all together so the field is gonna be the same as not being plowed cultivated fertilized either way uh, I'm hiring the worker to seed the field on all seven occasions. Uh, all seven occasions mean we got to do wheat. We got to do the maize slash corn, barley, canola, uh, peas, soybeans, and lupine. So yeah, I got I to gotta do this seven times. But by hiring a worker, a worker should almost seed it 100% every time. Trying to get it close to accurate as we can. So what we're going to find out is... On the same field how does each crop fare on a yield and then we'll compare the yields after they're all done I got a huge pad and paper here and a nice uh, pen ready to go write down some numbers so when we get all done yeah we'll compare them all and see what yields the best and maybe even uh, I thought about not doing this but if I don't do it someone's gonna say we could at least have shown that we're gonna sell what we would have earned off that crop at the market which is going to be tricky and we'll get to that later in the episode at the end um, when we talk about how each crop fail, uh, fa failed maybe it failed how each crop fared and selling so yeah uh, this this video is going to take me forever I, I gotta see well the workers gotta seed the field seven times I'm going to be the one harvesting the crop and I'm going to be harvesting it at cruising speed so I'm going to try to keep everything as close as I can uh, for every harvest make sure I get every grain out of the field that I can uh, You're not gonna be sitting here watching the whole thing all the time because uh, every time we're gonna keep getting this that we are sowing on soil that has not been plowed cultivator or blah 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 uh, what you're gonna see is Pretty much like just like a five to ten second clip at the end of a harvest and we'll see how much is in the grain trailer here for each each uh, crop type then like I said in the end I'll crunch some numbers uh, I'll stare at the sky so the text in the video show up rather well and uh, I'll show what each crop yielded uh, We'll show the percentage difference between the best the worst the average what have you and then like I said We will compare each crop and how much money I would have got if we sold it at the market But there's a disclaimer in that part of the video and like I said, we'll go over at the end of the video as well so yeah, we have started uh, seeding this field with wheat as you can see here, like just to show you again, not been plowed, cultivated, fertilized, or manured. I saved the game just before I hired the worker, and at the end of every harvest, reload the game at that exact point, hire a worker to plant the next crop in line, skip time forward until it's ready to harvest. I'll, uh, I'll yield it. I'll harvest it. We'll see what the yield is. So for you, these seven, these seven uh, uh, outputs of yield... We'll show in the trailer and it'll just happen like a snap of a finger be like okay this is what we got for wheat and you'll we'll see a total this is what we got for corn so on and so forth so it's going to happen rather quick for you rather long for me uh the process begins because we all know what, workers are not the fastest but um so i'm going to sit here and uh snack on some peanut butter m ms and just watch this guy make circles uh then i'll harvest it so next time i see you i should be just about done harvesting this wheat and we'll have our first total and then I'll have six more to go so yeah let let the let the games begin the first results are almost in harvesting the wheat 
I just got to make sure that, uh, and it should stay there, is the scarecrow. Got to make sure every time I harvest that the scarecrow is in the field for every harvest that I do. Or else someone's going to see it and notice it and hopefully I don't miss it. Uh, fingers crossed because, like I said, this this episode is going to take me a while to record. Uh, I'm, let's see, what time is it right now? Okay, so it's going to be about 50 minutes from start to seeding to ending of the harvest cycle. And I got to do this seven times. So, yeah, this video, this video is going to take me like six hours to record. Uh, hopefully the video is not that long because <laughs> you won't watch it. Uh, hopefully it's, uh, it's pretty short. Uh, I did, like I said, I did bring the trailer down here. I don't know if I'm going to need it or not. And on the wheat, we do not need it. So the numbers are going to be kind of, I don't want to say low. But there we go. We are fully harvested. Should be. Let me just jump out, click on the field. 100% harvested. There we go. The numbers on the combine. 9,926. Um, I don't have my pad and pen with me. That's not good. I'm leaning over grabbing that now. Yeah, so 9,900, what did I say, 9,900, whoa, 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 uh, 26. All right, so the first numbers are in. Uh, what does that mean? Well, we don't know. I haven't done nothing else yet, uh, so I need to do so. Uh, the other thing I'm also writing down, and I keep banging my hand against the mouse button, sorry about that, um, it's June 30th. So I'm writing, uh, I'm writing down every time the crop is ready now. It's not exact because I'm sleeping a week at a time. So I'm going to see if they're always ready on June 30th because we're planting on the same date when I because I'm going to reload the game here shortly. Uh, the one that should be off, unless they changed it, will be the corn, um, which is, I believe, next on my list to, uh, to harvest. So the next time I see you, I'll be finishing my harvest. Uh, I think it's corn I'm doing next. I'm just going right down the line that's at the market or whatever on my notepad over here. So yeah, I'm rambling on too much as is already. So for you, it's going to be a snap of a finger. For me, uh, about 50 minutes to another hour, and um, I'll be talking to you again. And here we are with the corn. But in all that time, sitting here watching the workers seed the corn, advancing time to the corn's ready for harvest, and I'm harvesting it, instead of me showing the numbers after every time I finish a harvest, by the way, the scarecrow's there, um, I figured, you know what, we're just, I'm just going to head and do all the harvesting and then show you all the numbers at once. So it's kind of like a surprise all at once. If I get the numbers one at a time, you can kind of see what's going on here. Uh, but let's keep it more interesting by, well, this will be the last time I bring it back after a harvest until the last harvester is. Uh, but this is stage two for me out of seven. I got five more times to go after this. Uh... And yeah, you're probably wondering, well, how, how long did it take for the corn to be ready for harvest? I'll tell you that later on as well. So <laughs> I give you all the information I can at once. Uh, people are down here because there's an event today. Of course, it's right here on the field that uh, we're harvesting on. Go figure. Yeah, there's a drone race right here in the corner of my field. I did not authorize that at all. And the town's not paying me for the use of my property. Um, I got to go have a talk with them. So... Yeah, so, so far, it, it's, it's coming along rather well. The test is, in other words. Um, so, I will see when I get done harvesting. I think the last thing I got to harvest is the lupine. So, I finish up the lupine. We'll come on back. I'll show you all the numbers from all the yields. And, uh, yeah, we'll start comparing some things. So, I'll see you. Well, for you, like, again, it's going to be in just a shade fade of the screen. And for me, probably about another four hours or so. Oh, man. Four hours. We are all done with the harvesting. I'm back at the farm because I had to get away from that field. Five and a half hours of sitting in the field watching someone seed it, and then me harvesting it, and then seed it, harvesting seven times. Had to get away. So we're over here on the hay barn so I can get a nice view of our field in the backyard. Uh, plus, I can scan up a little bit, and um, hopefully when I put the text on, the video later when I edit it, it all shows up nicely. We can all read it and everything. So yeah, five and a half hours of doing all this test. So hopefully this information is helpful to you. And uh, yeah, so you all want to know the numbers, don't you? Don't you? Well, first things first. Um, we planted everything on April 28th. And all the crops were ready to harvest on the 30th of June. 
give or give or take a day or two because I was sleeping a week at a time. So um, it, it's pretty much set. I would say two months for those crops. The corn or maize, as uh, it's called in the game, was not ready until the week of July 21st. So an additional three weeks for corn to be ready for harvest. So that's something to keep in mind when you're planting and we start showing you some of these stats later on. So I showed you the wheat to begin with, but I'm gonna throw all these numbers up here at once. You've probably been guessing a little bit like, well, what crop yielded the best on the field? What crop was the worst? Uh, if you've been playing a while, you kind of know, but uh, here are the numbers right here. And I'm, I got them in order from top to bottom of the best yield to the worst yield. So as you can see, canola rocked at 13,194. And then of course you got soy at the lowest at 3,742. The percentage, the, 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 the percentages on the right hand side, that is based on, so what I did was I took all of the yields of all seven crops, told them up, then divided by seven to get an quote unquote average yield off that field. And the percentages are how, what the percentage of better or worse than the average is. So you can see like canola is a 63 and a half percent better yield than the average. And then of course, once again, soy at the bottom is a minus 53.6% below the average yield off that field. Now remember, when I harvested that field, that was without being plowed, cultivated, fertilized, or any of that. Uh, this was planted in April and harvested in June, quote unquote, July. So there's none of that, uh, quote unquote, winter harvest that we went through either. So there are your percentages. Those are yields on a one hectare size field. <laughs> 0.96 hectares uh, but we're going to say one hectare size field so what does that mean really well this shows you how much you can yield and i know some people else out there are also going to take this consideration and i had thought about this well wheat and barley you get straw you can bale it and then sell it to market um go ahead <laughs> the bales the bales are not worth that much more but yes it can add to it so the next part of the totals we're going to start showing, and this is where I'm going to put in a, a loud disclaimer right here, because these numbers are going to be very vague. And this is how much money will we have made if we sold the harvest off that field? Now, it's hard to do this because in Farmer's Dynasty, as we know, the prices do fluctuate. So I'm just going on what today's market for the crops are. So, I mean... Today's market, it could have been a really good price for, say, peas. So, say, peas is like at the highest it can be, and the wheat could be at the lowest it could be. So, the numbers are going to be very vague. But I just wanted to show you that sometimes maybe the prices that you see, what they get per ton, even though the numbers may be higher than something else, if the other crop yields a lot better than the other, it, you know, it, it, it may change your mind of what you want to plant. So everything that I'm putting up on the screen here in just a second, everything of course is sold at the agricultural store, but the wheat and barley of course will be sold at the Old Mills Hill or whatever the heck it's called. I don't think I've ever seen the prices better at the agricultural market for wheat and barley than it is at the Old Mill Hill. I, I, I don't, the Old Mill Hill is always a better price for me for wheat and barley. So now I'm gonna throw the numbers up here for what we would have gotten for each crop and there you have it those are what i would have earned today on that crop if i sold if i harvest that crop today and sold it at each individual market that's what we would have gotten on the yield that we got so you can see today um canola's price was actually pretty good i mean the canola was selling for 571.82 and of course we got the most off of the field at 7500 uh, the wheat today was a really good price. So this is what I'm saying. The prices do fluctuate. So these numbers aren't set in stone. So a disclaimer, do not go by these numbers as saying, well, this is the crop I should sell or plant and harvest. Because two months from now, when you go to harvest them, those prices may, are gonna, these prices are going to change. But it may just give you some kind of an idea of what you're seeing if you were to look at the market and saying, well, you know, this price is a lot better than the other. But I kind of went over that. But you can see uh, that wheat, we got a good yield, uh, good money off the field. Uh, 7,000 and all the way down to uh, I know soy is always at the bottom uh, a lousy $2,560 so 
yeah, you're talking almost a $5,000 difference between soy and canola, which is pretty big for a one hectare size field. Uh, I think I did a video maybe like a year and a half ago I did soy, and I think the title on the thumbnail said soy sucks. Um, kind of shows here that the yield sucks, and yeah, the pricing may not, that's the pricing for today. So there's all the numbers you got. Uh, you can go back, pause the video. I think the main one to focus on, let me rephrase it, I don't think. The main one to focus on is the yield on a one hectare size field and what the yield is off it. You can judge from there what you want to plant for what the market is. It's going to be hard to judge on the market unless you have all the silos and then uh, you can kind of figure out of like, okay, well, you know, the pricing that I have here today on the map is not the best price that we've seen. Of course it's not. The price, prices fluctuate. Uh, so you can store and then sell when it's high. So just try to figure out. So I was just trying to give a good idea to people of looking at prices doesn't always mean everything. Sometimes it's, it's probably the yield that we want to look at. Um, I was actually surprised that canola was that much higher than the average off of one hectare size field. I mean, 63.6%. And I know what someone's going to say, what is the winter harvest? Because the winter harvest is supposed to be extremely good on canola. Uh, I would assume that price is going to skyrocket. Uh, who knows? It? I think they said it doubles. I, I have no idea. I forgot what it is. But there are the numbers. There are the totals. Uh, like I said, I would I would really just focus on the the yield per hectare, the prices. You can kind of figure out there. Like I said, disclaimer: don't go buy what I I would have earned off the field if I sold a crop today for the yield that we got for each individual crop, because the prices just fluctuate so much. So I wouldn't go by that. But so if I didn't put it up there, some people said, well, what what was the pricing and what was? Uh, so I just I'm just showing it. You see right there on the screen what the prices are for today. Uh, what the yield was for the crop and what we would have gotten for that. So I don't know if this answered a lot of questions for you or brought up a lot of questions or if you have questions, put them in the comments below. Either I, maybe I can answer them or maybe someone else can as well. But hopefully all this information was useful to you. I hope it was because, well, like I said, I'm five and a half, six hours into this uh, recording. Now I got to go edit all this video <laughs> and, and render it and uh, upload it. So this is something I don't usually say much, but uh, if you really like the video, give me a thumbs up and let me know. Uh, any comments, you know where to put them. And if you haven't subscribed yet, why not? I mean, look at the effort I'm putting for this. Come on, give me something. Uh, but that, that is going to do it for today, guys. Like I said, hopefully this video was helpful to you. I appreciate you watching as always. And I'll catch you next time in Farmer's Dynasty doing something. But until then, have a good one.